Hey, this is Phoenix, back uh, with X-Men number one, or Legacy number 301, by Jed McKay and Ryan Stegman. Uh, I believe this is Jed McKay's third title, big title that he's on with Marvel at the moment. Like the, uh, what was he doing? Um, Avengers right now, and this, and one other, but I can't remember. And of course, Ryan Stegman, I, only, I know his name, of course, mostly because of Venom back then with Donny Cates but uh but yeah uh this is uh, a new number one from the ashes a new beginning uh new roster and everything this is post Krokoa so it, you could say it's in a place of uh you know like it was before Krokoa type of X-Men sort of story like the climate of how people feel about X-Men or um mutants Except, uh, there's some aspects that you don't need to know, and some maybe you do. And as a person who hasn't read all of the Krakoa era, I've read up to like X of Swords. Um, I stopped there, and I went back to uh, uh, the '70s upwards. So, of course, like Chris Claremont stuff. Uh, so I'm reading all that at the same time. But I wanted to make a review about this new X-Men number one. I wanted to start with everyone. Seemed like a good jump on point, of course. And good news it is. It's not, uh, you know, chalked up with a crazy amount of uh, info you need to know because they even just let you know. It's like they give you a briefing like Crow happened and uh, it's no more. Now they find uh, mutants find themselves again, once again, displaced across the globe and the fate of the X-Men has yet to be determined. So the story of this one is set in Alaska. And your cast, up uh, to your cast, um, uh, the X Men for this book, the main X Men title, uh, adjectiveless X Men, <laughs> is Cyclops, Beast, Magneto, Psylocke, Kid Omega, Temper, Magic, and Juggernaut. Uh, I'm not familiar with Temper and Kid Omega as much. I know them, but everyone else I know pretty well. Uh, so let's get into it. It starts um, with this uh, chief, uh, chief Paula Robbins of the Merle Merle Peace Police Department, investigating for the behalf of the the count the town the county uh, to understand like what this X Men base that they created in Alaska is all about, and because uh, they had, um, you know. The town was sort of thriving with machine, like they they had jobs and stuff. But then, after Krakoa, uh, the X Men moved in here and took over, sort of. But they want to, you know, uh, have peace with the, the town folk, of course. So, um, let's see here. She goes up to the door. Beast answers, and right off the bat, I just want to say, uh, I am not crazy familiar with. Uh, all the beast stuff for all the cloning and him going bad. But I believe someone I saw somewhere how this was the uh, beast, like his memory of like back like the eighties or something. I could be probably wrong, but he seems like a happy, uh, jovial type beast, the one that actually like to make jokes and stuff. I hope we get that out of this beast. His design looks really really weird, but you know it's mostly with the eyes. Like I don't know what they were going with it. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, uh, Beast introduces himself to her. She at first gets like, you know, uh, frozen because she's like, oh, this is what you look like. <laughs> and uh, she's like, uh, Mr. Summers invited me here. Where is he? And he's like, oh, he's on a dangerous mission. And yes, it's very dangerous. Um, and it cuts to Santo Marco uh, where uh, Kid Omega is cursing up a storm uh, with the, the rest of these X-Men. And then this is where you see Psylocke and uh, uh, the rest of the X-Men, which includes Kid Omega, Psylocke, uh, Cyclops, Magic, Temper, uh, Juggernaut, the rest of this team are on a mission. And the mission is basically to find, uh, I believe, Wolverine, but also um, they saw on um, readings that... Uh, that there was six mutants or six new mutants 
uh, where where Wolverine is. Um, so they're going there as well, and you have some like fun back and forth uh, banter with uh, Magic and Juggernaut, like doing rock paper scissors and stuff over um, like who's gonna do what, um, and then they get tell uh they teleport out of the ship, uh, right into danger, <laughs> and I believe they're using the Marauders ship. It looked like uh from the Krakoa era stuff from what I remember, uh. Temper, was her name Temper or, sorry, uh, yeah Temper, um, uses her powers to like freeze everything for a landing, and then they jump off the ship. Everyone does their superhero, you know, landing, um, and while that's happening, it cuts back, of course, to Beast talking about like what they're doing, the X Men here in Alaska, which is like they're they're growing plants, they're, um, doing other lab related stuff, uh scientific research um the chief meets uh what's his name give me a second i forget the guy's name the guy with the the bones that you can he's pink i think they say his name somewhere it'll come up to me when i get to it but you'll see from the video. Um, and they sort of talk about, she talks about how she's sort of trying to understand like what they're doing because, you know, the town people had jobs here with the factories and now they don't, they're unemployed. But uh, Beast basically tells her, it's like, well, manufacturing is a bit of a disingenuous wordplay, is it not? Because you find out that the people working there originally were building sentinels, like that was their job making money um so that's always fascinating when you see that it's like of course they hate sentinels so that's something to think about and then it cuts right back to uh the cyclops area team and it shows that they're like harvesting or uh wolverine parts of him and uh basically uh uh, Wolverine says, I don't how to be psychic, but he lists off like 10 or whatever, uh, uh, psychics, like, you know, he, anyone can hear him, like, he, he's, <laughs> um, oh yeah, it says, it sounds like one of them has their ear on, um, which, I guess two of them are psychic, uh, Kid Omega, I forget what Kid Omega does, I know he's a mega level mutant. Um, I know you came from the Morrison era. Tell me if I'm wrong. Just please leave as many comments as possible. I want to learn more. And it's not really spoilers to me unless it's like major events or whatever. But um, they have more back and forth. It's like um, Salak saying, don't look any further in my mind unless you like just read what you need to <laughs> off of this guy or something like that. Uh, and they're going back and forth. And they find out that the people here um, from the Orcus, their um, Orcus Remnant Fourth School, and uh, what was it? Uh, after the AI betrayed the human parts of Orcus, Fourth School spread out like crazy. What was less of a mismatch of Orcus science propaganda and half baked John Sublime You Men memes? Um, and, and Cyclops is just like proud that, like, that, uh, he knows that <laughs> juggernaut because um, they're wearing X because instead of hating them, they want to actually become them and consume them for their power, which is even worse. And oh yeah, Cerebro said it picked up six mutants and the ping, but they found out the ping only saw um, these adults instead, which they were like, what the hell? Why are they adults? Usually they hit when it's puberty, the X gene comes. Or I mean, the X gene like, you know, an actual mutation uh, appears, occurs uh, in puberty. Um, but while that's happening, cuts back again to Beast, them talking back and forth about the world and, you know, feeling unwanted and, you know. Um, and the, the doc says, this factory must be a far cry from Kokoa. He says, I, I wouldn't know. Um, and he basically says, it's complicated. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it at for my sins. <laughs> um, and then it cuts right back. It's it's a back and forth, a uh, simple 
plot so far. Um, they get to the point where, so they get Wolverine back, and then they realize like these six individuals, these human or Orcus X X people, like they have a power. They have power as adults, and it's insane. Cuts right back. Um, Beast um, shows Chief uh, uh, Zorn, which is a Morrison creation, uh, which is really fascinating to see this character uh, in modern day. I don't know when the last time they used him. I don't know a crazy amount. I know who Zorn originally was and then became an actual character, which is some BS or whatever, but uh, it's cool to see him. And they made him look very Morrison uh, style X-Men clothing. Like he's literally with the the black and the <laughs> the the non superpower uh, sorry non super look uh and he's you know and beast is trying to show that they're not hiding mods like they're good people and trying to show peace with the the humans um until um professor x i mean sorry professor x professor m some people call him magneto it's like are you sure about that and he basically tells the chief, it's like, oh, no, I'm here to show you that, uh, you know, we uh, we are here to scare you. We are, you know, we we, you know, we are not under you. We are above you. Let, that type of, you know, uh, that type of rhetoric from Magneto that he's always been. Like, he's, he's in a better position, I guess, because he's with them instead of against them at this time. So that's always good. Um... And then it goes back to the X Men finding these six people, uh, but then you hear. Let's see. That there's other people like talking behind the scenes, saying where they are ready. These test subjects basically like to fight the X Men and all this stuff. So they're, you know, someone's behind the works of these people, and they just vanish. They're able to teleport them or something. Um, they get out of there. They go back. You find out that Logan is done with, you know, he says, uh, don't ever get tired of losing the civilization game because, civilization game, sorry. After Krakoa, after the way the world's turned on us again, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I can't build from the beginning again. He says, like, I'm basically, like, he's not giving up, but he is sort of, so he's going back to the woods. So like, leave him alone. So he's not on the team. Um, and that's something. Uh, And let's see here. Oh yeah, Cyclops and Beast just asked like how to go, or Cyclops asked Beast how to go. He wished he was there. <laughs> He's drinking some beer. Um, and then Beast asks him, speaking of the town, I'm ready to start stripping that thing for parts. If you can lend me Kane, Ileana, and Quentin, uh, he says no, not yet, Cyclops. And you realize it's um. Well, he says, I want to be sure they don't forget what they owe us. And it's a, it looks like a sentinel, like aiming at the town that's just frozen over. Uh, So that's pretty, pretty insane. It ends there, it ends with a, a QR uh, code that when you look it up, it has like one page, like with people that are secret talking, behind, you know, like a, in a table. Um. It's not in the comic, but it's just a bonus page, so who knows if that will lead right into the next one or not, but uh, but that's the book. That's the first issue, I should say. Uh, overall, uh, to be honest, I I don't usually give ratings, but if I had to, like, first initial thoughts, probably like a 7 or even 8 out of 10 for a good beginning. I'm, I think stories like these, I'm liking more than Krakoa, but not because Krakoa is bad so far, it's just... I like these more, um, from my understanding, the editor, Tom Brevoor, like, people think they're dumbing it down or making it too simple, and I don't think that's the case, necessarily. Like, things can, like, I can see them still make them, not complicated, but, like, uh, uh, just simply not simple, just, like, able to not have a condensed story that's boring, like, and even if it was simple, there's nothing bad about that either, it's, and there's multiple books, like, you, they don't all have to connect, from my understanding, of this time around, it's more individual like of course like things will connect for the sake of them all being x-men related but uh overall i i really enjoyed it but uh let me know in the comments what you think i really want to know like some chatter back and forth because 
I'm not in the know of everything, and um, I will be reviewing uh, the next issue probably. And I might do Uncanny, whatever the next X Men book is. I won't really do the rest. I'm not really interested in all of them. Um, just might do like this one and maybe one or the other. Um, but I'll let you know. Uh, but uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you again soon. Bye.